Hello everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here and I'm here to review Halloween Town High. So Halloween Town High is the third installment in the Halloween Town series and if you guys have followed this channel, Kevin Falk and I are actually continuing reviewing these Halloween Town movies. We actually reviewed the first two movies last year in the year 2015 and now in the year 2016 we will be reviewing Halloween Town High and unfortunately that last movie that yeah. So before I actually do review Halloween Town High, my guest star Kevin Falk is going to be reviewing this film and not only is he going to be reviewing this film, but he will also be giving you the overall plot synopsis as well. So Kevin, take it away. Thank you, Tony, and hey guys, it's Kevin again. As you guys know, uh, last year me and Tony talked about Halloween Town and Halloween Town 2, Calabar's Revenge. Well, this year I thought it would only make sense to review the last two Halloween Town movies. Either way, let's just get into the movie. The movie we're going to be talking about in this video is the 2004 sequel to in the Halloween Town series, Halloween Town High. Now, this movie, this is the one where Halloween Town, Halloween Town 2, like I said, I know those very well. Return to Halloween Town, I have my own thoughts about. We'll get into that when I get to that review. This one, I just don't remember. Every time I watch it, I don't remember this movie. I don't know if, it, I didn't know if it was because it's just not as memorable or if I just haven't watched as much and... I really was genuinely looking forward to rewatching this because I thought, okay, maybe I'll like it more. And after rewatching Halloween Town High, what did I overall think of this movie? For me, this movie is okay. Uh, I don't think this movie is great, but I don't hate it either. It's really just okay. It is a really interesting film that is very drastically different from the first two movies, but it's also a movie filled with missed opportunities. Now, I'm going to get into that, but let's get to the plot of Halloween Town High, which the plot of this movie, I think, is honestly really interesting. I really do love the way that the plot of this movie was done. Basically, we, it takes place two years after uh, the last movie. Just like the last one, it takes place two years after. Basically, Marnie, after doing what she did um, with the portal, she has now decided that because of the way things went down in the second movie, with them being able to open the portal whenever they want, now she asks, you know, she goes to the Halloween Council and basically comes up with the idea to uh, let the Halloween Town students be integrated into the mortal world and get them to interact with mortals, which is something that the Halloween Town Council is very much against. But basically, she makes it her mission to do that, and that's basically the plot of this movie. Now, while I think this movie's okay, the acting certainly isn't. I think the acting in this movie is truly great. I think everyone really did give a great performance, and really, again, it just shows how talented this cast really is. First of all, Kimberly J. Brown, uh, no surprise here, is great as Marnie. I've said in every movie, and she is really great in this role. Unfortunately, this would be the last time that she would play this role. We'll get into that in Return to Halloween Town, because that is a whole different ballgame that I have to get into. But I really did love her character in this movie, just how determined she is, and how much more confident she is. After doing what she could in Halloween Town 2, she's a lot more confident with herself. She doesn't let many things get in her way, and she makes things go the way she wants to. You see that there's not as much of her trying to appease to the council. So she will do what she can. She will make sure it happens the way she wants it to. And I really did like her character overall. I thought she was just a lot of fun to watch in this movie. She's just a really rootable main character. And I think they did a really good job with her overall. Um, they don't do... This definitely is the movie where, at this point, they expect you to know the character of Marnie Cromwell. So they don't necessarily develop her character. But they do some good stuff with her in this movie. That's enough for me to say. I think Kimberly J. Brown did a great job of what she had. She just doesn't have a ton to work with in this movie overall. And of course, Debbie Reynolds as well as Aggie is also great in this movie. I think this is probably her funniest movie yet. I think she was funny in the first two, but this one they really gave her some great jokes because she's in the mortal world and a lot of times she'll bring up things that we didn't know about. There's this great joke about Shakespeare that I was dying at. I mean, some of those things I thought were really funny and there's actually some really good clashing between Marnie and between Aggie because Aggie knows of reasons why this shouldn't really be going down, but Marnie does and I overall really liked it overall. I thought their clashing was really good, and I liked that they used her a lot in this movie. They used her a lot in all three of the movies, but here, it was kind of cool to see Aggie in the mortal world throughout most of the movie. You know, we don't even see Halloween Town in this movie, which was very interesting. I thought they worked very well together. I definitely really did like that. Joey, Joey Zimmerman, whatever you want to call him, J. Paul Zimmerman, I know he kept changing his name throughout these movies, but Dylan in this movie I thought was really great, uh, as usual. I thought he overall did a good job. I definitely liked what he had to do here. Again, not a ton for him to do, but he definitely was really good. 
I don't know why Emily Roski is the fourth main character in this movie, because she barely has anything to do with Sophie. We see Sophie in, I think, about three scenes in this entire movie, and unfortunately, that's the last we'd ever see of her. Return to Halloween Town, she's mentioned, but we barely see her, but we never see her, and in this movie, we barely see her, and I don't really know why they didn't give her a lot to do. I think they could have given her maybe more stuff to do, especially after Halloween Town 2. I kind of want to know what was going on with her powers, and we do get in the sense that she's getting them, but we we don't really know much of what's going on with her. We don't know if she's getting her powers. We just don't really find out a ton about her, and I feel like they could have done more with her, and it could have been maybe a more interesting movie overall. Something I do really like with the movie is, like I said, through this third movie, they expect you know the characters, and one of those characters they think you know very well is Gwen, you know, Judith Hogg's character. I really like Gwen in this movie, because Gwen is very different than she was in the first two movies. You know how against magic she was in the first two? Yeah, this movie, she's actually using magic on her own, and I didn't find it to be detracting from the character. I know a lot of people said, oh, it doesn't make sense why she's doing that. I thought it made perfect sense. She's now more open and accepting of this world. She's more welcome to perform these sort of abilities. She's seen how it can help them. She's seen how easy it is for Aggie and Marnie to maneuver their way around them, and... I actually like seeing Gwen not opposing magic, because she did get a bit annoying at points when she was doing that, so I like that in this movie. She's a lot more confident when it comes to that stuff, she's a lot more for it than against it, and I thought overall she really was great. Now comes my stuff that is sort of a negative, and that is the rest of the cast in this movie. They're good, but they're just really not giving a ton to do. Many of the Halloween Town students, for example, we barely get to get much insight on. The only one that really shines that much is Lucas Grabiel as Ethan, and that's mainly because of what he ends up doing in this movie. I thought overall he was good. I like what he did in here overall. I just thought that he didn't have a ton to do in this movie. They do some interesting stuff with him. He is a warlock, if I remember, but uh, they do some interesting stuff with him where he's into Shakespeare, but they don't really get to focus on it a ton. I feel like they could have done more with his character. Michael Flynn, of course, uh, Ethan's dad is revealed to be the main villain in this movie, Edgar Dalloway, and I really think it was kind of dumb the way they did. They don't really focus on the villain nearly as much as they did in the first two. The first movie, there was definitely some sort of, you could tell there was something going on with Calvary. You could tell that he was definitely responsible for what was going on. Halloween Town 2, they just blatantly said that Cal was a villain, and they basically used the rest of the movie to focus on that. I thought that worked very well, and I think it actually would have been kind of cool for them to maybe get Cal back. Remember Halloween Town 2, he says, we'll be waiting, he's still out there. I was thinking that he was going to be the one that was the head of these knights, but no, this character is. And let me just say, what Michael Flynn has, he is fantastic as this character. I thought overall he did a great job. I really love what he did in the movie, they just give him nothing to work with, and I really think he could have given him a lot more to work with, I would have liked his character a lot more, but unfortunately, just like the rest of the cast, he's not really given a ton to work with, I think they could give him a lot more to do, but he's really not given a ton to do, and it really does show throughout this movie, his motivation makes sense, but you just aren't really um, buying into him overall, because like I said, it's very late in the movie that they give him what they need to do. So that's really how I feel about the cast in this movie. The rest of the cast I found to be just very bland. Marnie's love interest, played by Finn Whitrock, actually is in this movie, as her love interest, Cody, is very much uh, just a, a bland, boring love interest. I found to be funny at points, like when he's talking to himself, but at then at points I found to be kind of annoying and I really was not a fan of him. And then, like I said, the rest of the cast in this movie is very underutilized. I think it could have used them much more, and they don't really give them the carriage development that they deserve. And that's really my biggest problem with this movie. Now let's get to the directing in this movie. Uh, the directing here is by Mark A.Z. Dippy, who I don't think did the other two movies, and it definitely is noticeable because this movie has a very, very drastically different tone from the first two movies. The first two movies had serious stuff, had funny stuff in there, but it was very contained and very serious, especially the second one. The second one was the darkest one they've had. This one, however, is a lot goofier, and I mean a lot goofier, and sometimes a little bit too much. I mean, the first two movies, yeah, they were fun, but they weren't as silly as this one was. This one is a straight-up comedy, and it works at points, but then at times, I wanted some serious stuff in there, and there's really not a ton of it. I wanted to see some more stuff in there, and I know that Halloween Town's more capable and I feel like the tone overall just didn't really work in the way they wanted to. They had some cool ideas, but it definitely did not work in the way they wanted to, and my biggest problem with this movie by far is the writing. I think the writing 
writing of this movie is very, very off. The first half of this movie, I definitely really did enjoy. I was actually having a really fun time with it. I think overall, it worked pretty well. You know, seeing Marnie interact with the students, trying to get them to, because, uh, you know, everyone sees the students as freaks because they don't act like you or I would. They're very much, um, you know, they don't really understand the ways that humans think and the way that humans are. I think all that stuff was so interesting. In fact, a lot of this plot is so interesting. The idea that humans and mortals are interacting together, the uh, mortals and the uh, creatures are interacting together, I think is really compelling overall. There's a lot you can do with that, and unfortunately, the movie barely focuses on it. And even though it is the main focus, we don't really get to see a lot of it. We hear a lot of talk about it, but we don't really get to see a lot of it. And if we do, it's like brief glimpses, like, oh, someone gets bullied, or we hear about this, or we see a brief shot of someone playing football. We don't get to see a ton of interaction between the humans and the creatures, and they could have done so much more with it, but they choose not to, and I don't really know why. I think they could have done a lot more with it overall, and they just didn't really focus on it on the, in the way I wanted them to. We do keep the focus on Marnie, because of course she is our main character, but I just feel like they could have made those characters a lot more interesting and a lot more memorable, and that really is one of my biggest problems with the writing. I thought the writing in general was very, very choppy at points, and that really didn't work. And like I said, my biggest problem with this movie is not just that, but also the villain. I think the villain in this movie was really lame, the way they did it, honestly. I, I know that Tony, uh, in Halloween Town 2 Calvar's Revenge, said that he he thought the ending of that movie was rushed. That is nothing compared to basically the entire duration of this movie. First of all, this is what this movie's like. Throughout almost the entire movie, there is this foreshadowing of the knights. Oh, there's no knights to worry about. Yes, there is knights. No, there isn't knights. Yes, you have to worry about knights. It's just like, can we get to the damn knights already? You know that the knights are going to be the villain. They'll show like a knight and his eyes are moving. They'll show a character and he makes some weird gesture and you can tell, oh, there's something bad about him. It's just tedious. It really is. I think they really could have gone more into the knight's background because the knights in general are really interesting. These are characters that are very inherently against Halloween Town. They are completely against anything that has to do with monsters and they want them gone and I think overall that could have been a lot more interesting than what they ended up doing but they just didn't unfortunately. Uh, I just think they didn't really get into that that much. I know that obviously the threat is there and they bring it up several times throughout the movie but besides those several times they bring it up, you just don't really feel it. And when that eventually does, when that reveal does eventually come about who is the actual villain, you don't feel anything. It feels so rushed. If there's only like five minutes left to go in the movie, and they really could have focused more on it. But instead, they focus on these relationships that they just don't really delve deeper into, and I feel like they could have done a lot more with. For example, there's a very good relationship in this movie, like I said, between Marnie and between Finn Murdoch's character, Cody. How she is to keep concealed from him that she's a witch and she has to keep ditching him. They could have done some really interesting stuff with that, but it's very, very rushed in what they do with that. Or the one between Dylan and this girl, Natalie, who is in fact a troll. And Dylan, as we know, you know, isn't against magic, but he's just kind of creeped out by it just because he always looks at things in a logical way and she's a troll and he doesn't know how to feel about that. Those are two relationships they really could have gotten more into, but instead they choose to focus on the more boring one, and I don't really know why. Cody's an interesting character, but they don't really do a ton with him, and especially at the end of the movie, I much would have rather him be the villain. I think it would have made more sense to do that. And I think it just, the, the villain they have in this movie, like I said, it makes sense, but it just didn't work in the way they wanted to. And the editing in this movie, if the movie was about 20 minutes longer, I think we really could have gotten more into these characters. I think we could have done a lot more with them, and the movie would have been a lot more memorable, because in general, it's just really not that memorable of a film. And something else the movie does really well is it has some really compelling stuff in there. Like, for example, the use of the magic. There's a lot more use of it in this. Like I said, now that they've opened the portal uh, in the second movie, they can really do that whenever they want. And the way that Marnie can use magic whenever she wants, there isn't as many restrictions, but because of that, the movie feels very, very loose. Like, there isn't any consequence to what's going on, and that's really a problem with this movie. While it is fun to see them use magic basically for anything, there isn't really much consequence to until the last few minutes of this movie, and even with that, there's not a lot of consequence there, and that really did deteriorate in my enjoyment of the film overall. So, unfortunately, while I really wanted to love this movie, I just didn't, and I wish that this movie was a little bit more memorable, I wish there was more stuff in there that I like, because like I said, there is stuff in there that's great, 
but the stuff that's great very much is cut short and isn't really focused on the way it should and unfortunately i've really thought about this hard i am gonna give halloween town high a three out of five or a c plus the stuff that's great is great i think they had some great ideas in there they just didn't really focus focus on them in the way they should have and because of that it really was a detriment to the film overall and it really is unfortunate because a lot of stuff that's in there is really interesting, but I really wish that they would have explored more because maybe this could have been a much better movie if it was trimmed, if it was a lot longer, if it focused on the characters more. It would have been a lot memorable and overall would probably be just as good as the first two were, but unfortunately because of how short it is, it really does hurt the film overall. But overall, guys, my review of Halloween Town High. Let me know what you guys thought of this movie. You have seen it, love to your thoughts on it. Uh, thank you again, Tony, for having me on this channel. And now back to you. Thank you so much, Kevin, for reviewing Halloween Town High. All right, so my quick thoughts when it comes to these Halloween Town films. The first Halloween Town, I really enjoyed. I think that's just a fun, simple Halloween movie. It's a nice movie to watch around the Halloween time. And best of all, it's a nice family movie. It's not anything gory. It's not anything too messed up. It's an innocent movie. And that's what I really enjoyed about the first. Second one I thought was all right. It's not as good as the first. It still maintains at least most of the magic of the first, but I thought it was all right overall. Could have been better. And where do I stand with Halloween Town High? Um, it's kind of the same with the second, except I think this is actually weaker than the second. However, I don't hate Halloween Town High. It's not anything offensively bad or anything like that, but it's not really anything special, and it's definitely, most definitely, not anything memorable either. This is not a memorable film, and it is quite disappointing. I would hope this would get the franchise back on track, and it doesn't really do that. There are some good things about Halloween Town High, however. First of all, Kimberly J. Brown, she's got Marnie down to a T. She is great as Marnie. I love Kimberly J. Brown in this role. She's still so fun. She's still so energetic. She has so much spirit to her, just like with the first two movies. Even with her being now older this time around, she never lost that magic that she brought to her role. So I thought she was still great here. And I also thought Debbie Reynolds is Aggie. She's still great here she's still funny just like with Kimberly J Brown she provides so much energy and so much charisma to her character which I really do appreciate I also did think that Joey Zimmerman he was also very good as Dylan and Judith Hoag, Hoag, however you pronounce her name, she's really good in this role as Gwen, the mother. And her character is actually different because whereas in the first two films she's not really a fan of the whole using your powers, but in this film she's actually more accepting of them. Because of that, I actually like this character more because I didn't find her exactly the most likable when it comes to the first two but in this film because she's more accepting i actually find her to be much more likable thank goodness so i thought she was really good lucas gray Beale. i still i actually really liked him in this film as well i really liked his introduction and then the film does have this nice cool aspect about the mortal talking to all the creatures i thought that was handled very well enough i would say um, yeah, there could have been more explorations into that, I gotta be honest, but, you know, for the moments we do have, I thought it was pretty neat, I really liked that. Some of the magic, just like with the first two films, I actually did really enjoy all of those things. I thought when it comes to the direction, which is by Mark A.Z. Dip. I think he was really good he had a very sharp direction to him very well done and I really like the cinematography of the film just like with the first two it's very well shot it's very clean even for Disney Channel standards I still think cinematography wise it is a very good looking movie to be honest and some of the humor in Halloween Town High definitely <laughs> made me laugh I thought just the humor was very well done in some moments 
of the movie. And I also did think that the movie was honestly just really good with its score. I thought the score just fit this world, this very magical atmosphere very well. And it provides some of the magic that I've come to really enjoy from the first film and even if I'm not exactly a fan of the second it even still has some of the magic from the second. I did like the scenes where Marnie was riding up in her broom. I actually thought the green screen for that was actually more clean in this film. Whereas the first two, the green screen was really noticeable. I actually thought they polished it up better. Yes, obviously they're still behind the green screen and maybe it's slightly noticeable, but it's more cleaned up. So I'll definitely will say when it comes to the green screen, it's more cleaned up here. And now this is where I have to get to my negatives with Halloween Town High, unfortunately. And first of all, the writing in this film has cool ideas. There's cool potential for this film, but the thing is that they don't really dive deep into it. They don't really explore enough of the cool elements that this film has to offer. Whereas, yes, there are moments where you're kind of intrigued. They don't really explore into that enough, in my opinion. I thought writing-wise, it was a really missed opportunity, if I have to be perfectly honest. It's not bad, and you could tell the writers tried to go somewhere but I just felt like watching the movie I didn't really go anywhere and because of that I wasn't really engaged watching this film this film was actually kind of dull and this is a short movie it's around an hour and 20 minutes and when you're kind of bored in some moments of the film that's when you know you could have done a better job of having me more hooked in the film because I'm being honest for some moments I really was not all that engaged watching Halloween Town High the students in the film were totally wasted. They could have used the students better and I even thought the performances on the, student, on the students at best, they were just fine but they were nothing special and that's really due to the rather bland script that was really given to them so I can't really blame them for having just all right fine meh performances but the students were just there they weren't really given anything to do. Even, I'm gonna be honest, even Marnie, now I think about it, didn't really have that much to do in this film. And that's ironic considering she's the main star of this film. They could have given Marnie more to do. Pretty much everyone could have had, honestly, a little more to do in this film. And it's kind of a shame, because like I said, this film just has potential and it never really reached to that. I also do think that a lot of the humor in Halloween Town High honestly really fell flat. Uh, it definitely got too over the top for its own good and I know that the first two movies were over the top and goofy and all that but they were in control they they were calm I guess you could say about the cheesy humor they balanced that very well but with this film I felt like it got too over the top for its own good in my opinion also, I do think that the movie can honestly get quite rushed. The pacing of the film was really weird. There's some moments where it kind of does drag along and I'm like, okay, let's get to this. But then there's some moments where the film is really rushed. And I thought the second Halloween Town was rushed. But no, this film is actually more rushed than the second Halloween Town of film. Especially when you get to the climax. The climax was so rushed. It was so so out of nowhere, I thought execution wise that could have been better. And the main antagonist of the film, completely wasted. They really underused him. He's not really in the film until once you get to the climax. That's where he really shows up more. Before the rest of the film, you don't really get much of him. And then once you do get to the climax, you're, it's not really all that exciting. And even though they kind of tell you why he's doing a certain something. I just didn't feel like it was really ex explained well enough in my opinion and it was just really off-putting if I have to be honest. Sophie, that's the other problem. Sophie was so underused in this film. Like really, how come Sophie couldn't have just tagged along. I know the film is called Halloween Town High and she isn't exactly in high school, but they could have had Sophie do something in the film and she only appears in a few scenes at best. It's really sad to see the little sister 
have something to do, be a huge part of something in the first two movies, and she really has nothing to do here. I really like Sophie, so it really bothers me that she's underused here. <sighs> so, yeah, that honestly does get on my nerves, to be honest. Overall, you guys, Halloween Town High isn't anything terrible, but it's not really anything that good either. It's just a very meh, very bland, very forgettable movie. Unfortunately, it is weaker than the first two films. It had ideas that had the potential to make this film better and intriguing. In some spots, it was a little intriguing, but honestly, it was kind of dull, to be honest. So, yeah, Halloween Town High, it's eh. I'm going to give it two out of four stars. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what you think about Halloween Town High. And I would also love to give a huge thank you to Kevin Folk for coming here to review Halloween Town High. And now, me and Kevin will see you guys in our review for <sighs> Return to Halloween Town. Yeah. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power.